More friends? When she came in for her credential program, she gave many friends. When she moved on, she became an exemplary teacher. She was advised by Dr. Helen <coughs> another friend, another professional colleague. She was credentialed by Roxanne Weiss in special ed and deaf and hard of hearing education. We bring up Helen. When I look back on the amount of years that it's been that I know Roxanne and that she was a fixture here at CSUN, it's truly shocking. She was in my classes back in 1987 and 1988. My goodness, that really was at the beginning of my teaching career here at the university in preparing teachers to work in the field of deaf and hard of hearing education. She was an amazing student who was eager about all of the possibilities that existed in deaf education. She wanted to be taught and was always ready to learn. She was eager and ready to, ready to go in every class period. So during this time, we had to give lessons and demonstrate lessons. So when I was a student learning about interpreter correction, so as part of the curriculum, students had to do mock presentations or teaching demos. This was back in 1988. So in Roxanne's cohort, she designed a lesson regarding bilingual bicultural education surrounding Amazing, right? Tremendous work. She was practicing those teaching skills that she just demonstrated and then continued to apply all the things that she had learned in her work over her many years as a fantastic teacher. Let's take a look here. This is from 1988 displaying her graduation ensemble as she graduated from our credential program, ready to start out in the field. This photo is one of her first as a new teacher. I'm sure some of you out in the audience regret those first year teacher photos. Here's Roxanne's. And yet another one. Here's a picture of Roxanne with one of her students. Now as you look at these different pictures of Roxanne, you can see the smile that is always on her face and how she personally engages positively each and every student. Let's take Now this particular photo reminds me of the fact that 
Roxanne was always making connections with parents of her students. She would include activities in her class that videotaped students and then would invite parents to come in and celebrate their children's work and accomplishments, which was such a tremendous skill and activity that Roxanne created for her students, which would allow the connection between home and school for the families. You can see a clip of a video being shown to all the students and their families in the classroom. You can see the students eagerly pointing one another out, saying, hey, look, there's you, look, there's you. After showing the students' work, there would be a reception with the family celebrating the work of all of the students. Roxanne was masterful at making connections between the students and their families. found this for us to share with you today, a posting from Facebook. After Roxanne had passed and knocked down yet another barrier, you would think that you had progressed through your education, but then the state adds yet another test or another to jump through. So here's her Facebook posting saying, I did it, and congratulating herself through the myriad steps, challenges, and obstacles that she faced throughout her education and her tenure as a teacher. Later in her career, Roxanne was experiencing the frustrations that teachers do with the many different aspects of teaching, the graduation level of students, the variety of skills that students come to the classroom equipped with. And Roxanne was feeling that sentiment that a lot of teachers feel. She wanted to figure out how was it that she could help her students more. She shared this feeling with Kathy, who then networked with other individuals here at the university about how is it we can best support teachers. So a co-worker of mine by the name of Rachel and I came together to figure out in the CSUN network what is it that we can do to help teachers out there fulfill these dreams that they have for their students. So Roxanne decided to help up her teaching Andy to join this grant supported for professional training that was regarding the new Common Core standards. So yet again, she showed that eager nature and that positivity that she always exuded. She knew that she wanted to improve her teaching and she knew that this was the right step to join this grant program. Here's a picture of her at work amongst her colleagues who are all teachers learning these new applications of Common Core Standards. This training involved new technology and its application to the Common Core, but Roxanne was there, eager as always, moving forward. So Jay Daly is featured with Roxanne, where they are acting out a skit at this Calent conference, which was based on this Common Core training that they had all attended that I just mentioned. So this skit is a humorous 
take on what it looks like to be faced with common core standards as a new teacher. So I'm just going to show you a short, short excerpt from that live skit. So we can see, again, that positivity, the eagerness to improve, and that can-do attitude. So this is the feature group of students who are part of that grant that I just told you about, who worked diligently and hard together to acquire new skills. Now, Roxanne didn't finish there. She also was a teacher at Marlton that had a group of students who had special needs. And again, the feeling was, I need to be a better teacher for all of my students. So she returned to our university once again and took a class, and this was a new class for Roxanne that featured the special needs of students who were deaf as well, who had other special needs. We'll next look at a short clip of her commentary regarding what it was that she learned and how she felt as a result. being in that class. So, you may think that's just the end of her accomplishments, but most definitely not. Roxanne knew that she wanted to create something for her students that was something she could share with all teachers and that would last. So Roxanne started a new project, and we have two of her co-partners on that project. We'll give you some more detail about her work and what that project entailed, and how this will be disseminated and how it will last in our community. Let's move on to this last picture. Thank you, Roxanne, for sharing your positivity with us. Everybody wave our scarves. Or ties. Wow. I want, I, I looked over at the moment uh, and listening to Ellen speak and I realized the time that I saw Roxanne Lawson here at CSUN. She called Cal State University of North Ridge her home. Home away from home perhaps, but she truly grew during her time here and made CSUN look good, am I right? The National Center on Deafness 